thank you thank you dr ajit uh, once again i thank uh, iua and other organizing committee members for giving this opportunity we are utilizing our time in such crisis scaffold is a thing which scaffold is a small bone but books are written on it it's a very vast topic because of lot of things uh, but we have only 10 minutes so i'll just restrict my talk to the percutaneous fixation i'll not go into other managements but let's see how it was in the history watson john bowler uh, they said all fractures will unite if you immobilize them well and uh, uh, there was a case report which was more than a one year it was immobilized this is myself who got immobilization may june july and august these are the months in delhi and i was having a cast so it's really painful fracture itself is painful but treatment is also painful because of this long immobilization rusi and mclaughlin they decided that surgery can be done to get early mob early mobilization early uh, union but because of uh, you can say precarious blood supply towards the proximal pole uh, people went into more and more minimally invasive and percutaneous fixation to get a better uh, union rates and to prevent avian so uh, minimally invasive uh, procedures they became popular so what are the prerequisite if i had to do a percutaneous fixation what do i need surgical skills definitely for any procedure it is required minimally displaced fracture fractures should be reducible if you cannot reduce your fracture closely you, you have to abandon the procedure you cannot fix on reduced fractures or mild reduced fractures then you need a cannulated screw system without which uh, fixation won't be possible good imaging definitely nowadays we have image intensive eyes are so commonly available for other side surgeries so good imaging is again a must without proper imaging you can have bad bad check films your script placement cannot be proper so these are the things we require and these are the few few example there are more than dozen uh, different types of screws available only thing is they have to have a headless these screws are headless and they have some kind of a compression mechanism by variable thread or by uh, you can see this is the twin fix in which both components they move independent of each other so that you can achieve uh, compression by moving of uh, different parts of the screw at different times so percutaneous fixation one of the good example uh, advantages it maintains the vascularity of the scaphoid so first thing is you should have uh, get a proper view of the uh, wrist so that you uh, unnecessarily don't use uh, imagined square to reduce the uh, uh, radiation then you put on a surface of the surface of the skin it's not through the wire it's on the surface you see what is the desired direction of the uh, wire and accordingly on the surface you make your lines or markings in ap view as well as lateral view then you make a small incision maybe few millimeters open the capsule here in this case we are not using a, a sleeve but you should use sleeve to prevent the tendon this thing uh, to demonstrate you are not using a sleeve, uh, uh, sleeve so use a sleeve to protect the tendons passing your guide wire once you pass in your guide wire and you have checked it in a cr then you put a cannulated drill on the wire and check in all the views you have to check what is the position of the drill in all the views once you okay with it you put your pass your screw over the wire just like any cannulated system you can just take in your bone do the final editing to achieve the compression once you achieve uh, desired uh, your screw has gone to the desired depth you can again check everything under cr and remove the wire multiple views you should check i mean it should be satisfied that everything is good then you can just close with one stitch and this patient can be though we don't allow with um, lifting weights but they can be mobilized they can do small amount of work after one week within a week depending on pain relief 
one of the big dis disadvantage it's a 0.5 mm wire if wire is bent and you're drilling these wires can break believe me it's a very painful procedure to remove the uh, uh, broken wire so you have to be careful either you pa pass your wire across the scaffold to be zipped towards the thumb or you have to be careful that you're not breaking or keep on shooting multiple times that your drill is not cutting the wire the other approach is bola approach bola pocketiness approach which goes from scaphoid to buckle you can see it is going from scaphoid to buckle towards the center of pole of the proximal pole of the scaphoid so this is how we do same procedure but entry is from bola words you're passing your guide wire and this is how you achieve it other thing because as you're seeing the uh, entry point was not central to the scaphoid distally so you can pass your wire through the trapezium you wire your pass your wire through the trapezium through the center you can see through the center of the scaphoid in both views you can do it and you drill through the trapezium but your screws remains in the scaphoid it just passes through the trapezium into the scaphoid so that this is how your screw is there but you have drilled through the trapezium so that gives a biomechanically much more stable construct so this is the animation you can just to demonstrate everything much simpler passing your wire factor is reduced there is a second wire b rotation if there is a combination you should always put in a d rotation wire because then you measure the length of the wire screw then uh, take it further wire is put further then you drill it across the factor side take a desired length of the screw which goes through through and through you achieve a compression and now either you can uh, remove the wire and mobilize something like this or you can drill over the second wire for turn a second screw so another case showing showing like this a wire two wires drill one screw was passed then instead of removing it we put the second screw because there was some amount of combination so we thought we might give extra stability so two screws were passed and uh, union was achieved other way we can do is arthroscopic assessor fixation it is again it's a scope you check the advantages that you can uh, check the reduction uh, visualize the reduction and screw can be passed in the same percutaneous way as we are doing like scope is inside from the mid upper joint wire is there through the wire passing the screw and you can mobilize them as early as in for first week four to five days you can mobilize them but we don't allow them to lift weight and things like that and they can start writing also within a uh, this was fifth post of day the patient was writing and because he had exam actually he had exams that was the main reason we allowed him to write so uh, so indications for percutaneous fixation will be undisplaced minimally displaced acute factors uh, undisplaced or minimally displaced fibrous non unions or there are stable non unions without bone grafting if you are using arthroscopy then you can use arthroscope uh, via arthroscopy you can do bone grafting so let's see literature what does literature say 1970 was the first time when first time 4 mm canalitis to can was used by steadily uh, to do the percutaneous fixation of scaphoid uh, this was 2001 in which uh, it was a established method by this and they had shown that radiographic union is faster and much more uh, this study was done in the military personnel so this was one of the our studies we submitted this article in 2009 uh, study was conducted from 2003 to 2007 and in which we also said that there are good results but we delayed uh, non union fractures scaphoid again the two percutaneous screws that we had discussed that one is through the trapezium other one is through the scaphoid uh, tubercle and this was the study in which they found biomechanically the trans trapezium is better but clinically there was not much impact so this is the normal way you go from the tubercle this is eccentric and wire becomes proximally centric 
but when you go through trapezium it is center in ap as well as lateral view so biomechanical cadavers they found that uh, screw placement through uh, trapezium is much more stable or gives a much more biomechanical stability there is another study even in which uh, they took it further for uh, non unions the bone defect this was done in 2011 published in 2011 for cutaneous fixation was done these are the few cases their cases which they demonstrated non union established gap non union which was fixed for cutaneously without bone grafting so another there are many studies which have shown that for cutaneous fixation uh, they are achieving union as as i has 100% union rates you can see so cutaneous fixation is more biological fixation uh, this was used in for the non unions also delayed union also and acute fractures also so there are multiple studies so take home messages cutaneous fixation is a safe procedure which allows early mobilization after fixation dorsal anticlade is preferable for proximal bowl fractures if fractures through the waist or distal transtrapezoidal bowl approach the screw placement is central and cutaneous fixation can be used in delayed and stable non unions but you have to be cautious you have to be cautious and incision is very small one sometimes 1 cm dissection is required to see the tendon to prevent the tendon injury if you are going through the volar approach uh, the radial artery injury can be prevented by giving a very small incision thank you mm-hmm.